Hey, hey, this is Terry Bean with another great episode of Business Growth Time. Today, we're excited to be joined by Asha Mankowska. But with me, as always, my good friend, my high school pal, the lovely and talented Janet E. Johnson, where today the E stands for ecstatic. Ooh. Okay. Oh, Tell us why. Cool, well, because today's the election day and it's over, damn it. Oh, <laughs> yes. over. I know you all won't the hear this. You had an election. I remember the yeah. last Well, no, I had it. it was election is almost over. It was a really oh, elongated, <laughs> which is another good E word for you people. But it's today. It's yeah, done. No, it's Janet can get back on Facebook and not have to be mad at half the world. I'm talking about me. I'm not talking yeah, about you. No, I funny. just don't. You know what? In my business, it's I'm ecstatic when it's over so that we can get back to business because nobody wants to be on Facebook right now. So it's um, <laughs> um, it goes back to being business. Speaking yeah. of business, I'm really excited about our guest today. I actually met her through a referral. A gentleman named Matt Johnson reached out to me because he saw our pad podcast on the website on LinkedIn page and said, you need to meet this lady. And so Asha and I had a great conversation for about a half an hour and she is cool as the other side of the pillow. She's one of <laughs> Forbes most influential success coaches, right? Which is pretty slick. She's a two time international best selling author. One of the books she wrote was with sales trainer extraordinaire, Brian Tracy. She's an attorney. She is kind of a world traveler. Wait till you hear her talk. She doesn't sound like she's from here, Janet. She doesn't she's even sound like Minnesota. she's from Minnesota. She doesn't <laughs> sound like it at all. So I am going to introduce you all to Asha Mankowska. Asha, how are you? I am fantastic. Thank you so much, Terry, for this amazing introduction. I just feel like in the clouds, you know, after that. My I will apology. just have you with me every day, introducing <laughs> me anywhere I speak. I will be it your is, flavor flav. That'll be. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> you know, Terry, it takes the charisma that you have, you know, to um, actually interject so much enthusiasm and fun with all the introductions. Sometimes introductions are so boring that you yeah. notice, right? And we like, oh. Okay. <laughs> right. And was like, oh. I oh. will. Thank you. And it's. So, it's easy when good people have done good things, right? It's oh. really easy to say excellent stuff. So you've had a really fascinating career. You've been in law, you've done mediation, you've done coaching, you do authoring, you have your own radio show, you've done your own <laughs> podcast. Wait, do you have your own sleep schedule? Do you even get around to any of that? I can't imagine. Oh my God, you know what? Um, first of all, I would like to thank you for having me today. Uh, at your show. I'm really delighted to be with two amazing, amazing entrepreneurs and such a successful uh, business owners as well. So it's both ways, you know, it's always mutual. So that's first of all. Second of all, you know, I think uh, we are very um, in the same spot and, and we are very kindred spirit when we're talking about being so busy and having so, so many accomplishments. I think the more things we are in, the more things we accomplish, we do, uh, we are even more productive and effective. Wouldn't you agree? Well, yes. the old saying is you want something done, you give it to a busy person. Yep. yep. Exactly. That's it. Or, or what did you, well, I learned this here in San Diego in, to the a single mom or single dad, right? Because they always on top of everything. <laughs> And that's it, because there's a difference between time management and priority management, oh, yes. right? Oh, Super yeah. people that are high performers, they know they can't manage time. Time is time, 24 yeah. hours a day, every single day for every mm -hmm. single one of us. They manage the priority and they know what they yeah. have to get done because they keep their eye on the ball. I love that, Terry. Mm -hmm. So Fantastic. very true. So Janet, I shared I shared Hasha's bio with you. Did you get a chance to take a quick look yeah, at it? Talk about busy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I love it. I love the the international flavor. I love the mediation. So I'm curious. I don't even know where to dig in. But let's talk about some of the coaching work that you do. Sure. Where how who do you look to coach? In in what's your area of specialty that separates you from some of the other coaches that we've all met? Fantastic question. Um, you know, my career coaching started kind of organically. I just discovered it was my passion always. 
uh, even studying law back in Poland, I had several companies that I've built and I sold, you know, and I attracted people. So I had to learn uh, how to basically market, how to build businesses, you know, all, all, the, you, all the hoops that you have to, <coughs> excuse me, I'm, I apologize for my cough. No problem. It's like the, the, uh, I was telling you that <laughs> it's, the weather here is crazy. But so you might hear me coughing sometimes. But um, so I think um, it was very natural for me to choose what I would love to coach about because it was my passion. So business, I discover not law, not mediation in a sense, but working with other people in business, helping them create products, creating their branding and branding awareness and visibility, right? And then what follows positioning of either product or, um, or their service, because it depends what you build your business business, I mean, your business around either yourself or your product. So Apple, that will be product, right? But let's say Brian Tracy, it will be around Brian Tracy. Yep. So I just discovered that that's what I'm passionate about. It comes really easy to me. So I, I start to love to strategize about this and then very quickly when i made a switch from attorney to business coach all my prior co-workers told me hey please do this for us because you were already doing it you were interviewing our clients accepting our clients so just help continue um help us doing so and you know spread out the word about our services because i've noticed that there is a lot of people out there that have an amazing talent or skill, right? But uh, they don't know how to build, build business around it. Mm -hmm. That's two different mm -hmm. things, right? They are fantastic and phenomenal, but in the same time, they becoming the best kept secret. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, with my passion for it, I start digging and discovering, of course, educating myself. That's a huge part why I became so successful really fast, really quick. Because uh, the first steps, what I did, I invested myself and in my education. Um, so not only, you know, my products or anything like that, but I hired top people, business coaches also to help me, you know, um, better my craft. So I can be of best service to my clients. And then I, I did so many things because I wanted to cover so many things at first, you know, from building business to uh, to how to market and then how to close sales. But I realized that it's really so much and I was overwhelming my clients. So I chose something that I thought it was very, really unique and over the years proved that I was right and I loved that the most, which was branding. Mm -hmm. So that was the branding positioning that when I help my clients build the right foundation for their business, then they sales skyrocket as well, right? Because Absolutely. it's very, um, sometimes people don't <laughs> realize that it's a very strong connection in between how do you present your service and offer and yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Online and online to your clientele. And first of all, you have to know who is your ideal client, right? Who do you presenting to? What kind of channels do you need to use for it? And um, if they're interested, if they, if they see clearly the benefits for them. So I think that's unique because I found my, my niche, so to speak. Yeah, and yeah. I really start concentrating on that aspect of business. And my, my uh, pleasure is to work with very successful leaders and business owners. Also, you know, people that are in transition from, let's say, corporate world to mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. As we know, it's totally different. So um, I help them really completely transform their identity, business identity and a professional identity so they can um, achieve the results they want. Either it's closing sales or getting bigger visibility out there, being known and respected as experts. I think that's such a great point because a lot of times, when we, especially people that are starting off in business, they look at the top of funnel and it's so big, right? They yeah, yeah. everybody's an opportunity, yep. and mm. you spend too much time running all over the place, right? Janet, <laughs> you and I had this conversation that too. So 
about mm-hmm. it, just the marketing space. I mean, you went through this kind of transformation. Explain, explain how you kind of funneled into where you are. Well, I started with doing everything for people when it comes to internet marketing. Yeah. And then, you know, it became where, okay, I can't handle keeping up with the Google changes and the social media changes. So then I just said, okay, Google is going to be for the SEO people. I'm not going to be SEO, you know, so we're going to move over here. And then over the years, it became where I ended up with more B2C clients. So mm-hmm. now, it's, I'm not the LinkedIn expert. And I tell people I'm not the LinkedIn expert, you know, and, and so niching it a little more. Could I go even more niche? Sure. But I have a lot of different clients that, that come to me. I mean, one of my big niches is jewelry, but you know, I still could take that dentist down the road. You know what I mean? So it's hard to, you, I loved what you said about you niched in to, and I think people want to stay so, oh, you know, I can do it all. I can, yeah. I can have this person and this person and this person, you know. Yeah, you yeah. Really, um, the more you niche, the more successful you'll be from what, you know. Very true. Um, I heard recently, and right now I'm repeating this because it's so funny. Um, in your, what is it? In your niche, re- your niche, niche, niche will make you rich, rich, rich. So, you know, this nice. is oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny slogan, yeah. but it's very true because... Mm, when you can, let's say, a little bit narrow down yourself, right? And you can select your avatar, your ideal client, who this person, uh, a woman or a man is, the more specific you are, the more specific you will be able to even know how to help this person, right? And I always say, really start simple. Don't, uh, like, we, I think we all did this uh, mistake and we learn on that. I learn on my mistakes that we're trying to help too many people, like, you know, Janet said, too many people at the same time with everything. I can do everything. Yes, you can. That's true. But you know what? Start from one problem, one issue that you will be solving from, for your clients and, uh, you know, create the solution. Make sure that they understand that the solution is connected with you, right? So they have to hire you to get that sure. solution, yeah. right? So there is no misconception. Uh, of course, you will meet a lot of people that I can do everything by myself, and that's okay. That's why, you know, uh, we put so many content out there, right? Mm-hmm. For people to do everything by themselves. You know, when they grow with their business and they will be able to uh, um, learn how to delegate and, and hire others, Yes, that's the next step, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is the next step. So you talk about Avatar, and, and we're not talking about the movie with blue people or the really cool kids show. That's my both, favorite movie, by the both, way. <laughs> both are excellent. Um, but Avatar from a hey, – what's that picture of that ideal client and the mm-hmm. demographics and the psychographics? Mm-hmm. How do you walk your clients through picking what's the right fit for them? Fantastic question. You know what? Um, we have to – because as I – mention uh, creating your your business or rebranding your business it's really creating your identity so it has to be really congruent with what you love with what you all about what is your passion and what are you good at right Mm -hmm. because there is no way you can be great in everything right okay maybe you are great with everything let me take that back but do you enjoy doing everything right all right. I know I, let's say I knew how to create websites because I had to learn. I hired someone in the past and this person just didn't do the good work. So I had to learn and I was good at that. Did I enjoy it? No, absolutely not. And I gladly, you know, I also have, that's what makes me unique too. I remember you, you ask, uh, I have also my team, this Asha's team that can implement all yep. what my client needs right are the websites or or funnels or marketing campaigns and branding and all that but i realized i don't like to do websites you know it's not my passion in it so when you're thinking about your ideal client and exactly what you're solving you have to check in with yourself what you love the most right and exactly what kind of client would you like to work the most with right i realized that also over the years that my avatar, as you said, ideal client, not the blue people. <laughs> not the blue people. <laughs> In a way. 
uh, I'm sure they, they already have to be successful, right? So they ha- what does it mean successful? Means that they had to go through ups and downs to me, mm. right? So they already probably had successful business or maybe successful career and they lost it at some point. They went back up. Why I'm very keen on that? Because it takes some skill sets, right? Uh, like determination, being resourceful, being the leader and uh, open, coach, coachability too. Really that's huge. what, right. It's Good true, point. Mm-hmm. Right. As we know. So that's what I'm talking about that I'm working with the successful people. Doesn't mean they have to be super successful right now, but they were in the past, right? We all have ups and downs. So look what you need, what will make you happy. And it's not selfish. It's really because if I love what I do, if I love my clients, they will love me back. You know, if I think about this, if you don't enjoy what you do, do you think your clients will enjoy you? You know, Mm -hmm. or if you will be selling something that you hate, a product, you design a product that you hate. And because you just okay with that, you were good with that. It's hard to sell. I mean, it's hard to exactly. You don't have the passion about it, and yeah, you you. need that passion behind it in order to sell. Yeah, so you're not really helping yourself. So I rather if you okay design that, sell this business, sell this business to someone else, make money, and then really put your passion somewhere that you will really love, and then your avatar, your ideal client, will really feel that. Mm -hmm. So take those steps to really check in with yourself, and then. Maybe with business, what if uh, with executive coaches and with other coaches, what this person really has to, uh, what this person needs are, right? What challenges, think about this, what real challenges that they're going through that you can help? Because that's very important. Let's say, um, it makes me laugh sometimes when people say that, oh, you know what, I help uh, people to achieve seven figures, right? Mm-hmm. Awesome. So I'm hoping that you also achieved seven figures. Oh, right? oh you yeah. That part. Isn't so that true? It, <laughs> right. So something that is congruent and authentic for you. That's mm-hmm. how you choose your ideal client. Mm. I love it. I help people achieve seven figures, and I live in my mom's basement. <laughs> I know, yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> and I, I teach people how to do it, right? Yeah, I, I eat, because eat, eat, I dinner. read, I read a book about it. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. So now I can do it. Yeah, you know, and, and in my industry, I, you know, I, I, there's a lot. I mean, yeah. I see a lot. You know, where they're not actually behind the scenes doing it. Right, but that they're out there teaching it because they heard it and read it somewhere. You know what right. I mean? They okay. went and watched somebody else say it. They took a bunch of notes and said, "I can do this." <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's that's so frequent, especially when you have an industry where there's no certification or no continuing education required, and there's no real barrier to entry to get into. Oh, and marketing's they like that, and coaching's like yeah. that, right? You can just, I, I am a coach. Look at me. I coach now because uh-huh. yeah, I, I said so. Yeah, I think you, you touch a very important point, Terry, because they are certification. They really are for coaches. Sure. So, and for instance, and for marketing uh, too, but they're not for required. Marketing. Um, that's true. That's true. No. But for no. instance, in Europe, they are. Interesting. So, yes. So let's say I, you know, ICF, it's um, International mm-hmm. Federation for Coaches, as we all know, right? Yeah. It's yeah. required for coaches to have certification, be part of it, be a member. And when I was having a pleasure, I spoke in Poland, in France, and in Germany for ICF, then uh, I re- you, you really see that it's in high regards. If you don't have it, you know, you have to have master's degree at least in several, in certain, um, in certain uh, subjects, right? Uh, to be even able to do the certification in, in maybe coaching wow. or something like that. But in Europe, it's totally different. Let's say when you go working to the bank, it's even a bank teller, you have to have masters, I'm sorry, not masters, but at least bachelors in banking or, you know, and speak three languages. So that's another thing. Wow. So in Europe, the educate it's, it's really treated very seriously. And I think, you know, here in California where I'm in here too, and I had the pleasure to be chosen as a vice president of marketing for San SDPCA, San Diego Professional Coaches Alliance, 
I met a lot of amazing coaches, certified coaches, um, you know, top skills and uh, qualification. Again, nothing to do with business, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They broke and, and, and but they had all the certificates, so what? Right. Yeah, well, and that's, we, our value on education in this country, uh, I have to say this gingerly, is <laughs> relatively askew. Let's call oh, it there, right? We don't. Yeah. We say it's important, but we don't treat it as important. Janet, right. uh, Janet was a, a educa- what? Uh, elementary. Elementary. Was it elementary? I was going to say, mm-hmm. you were like a little kid teacher at one point. Yeah. Or yeah. did you With actually? The kindergarten endorsement. Yeah. Like <laughs> See, she's certified. <laughs> Slightly different than certifiable, which is. Yeah. Uh, but so we, we say the things about education and we want people to have education. We talk about college and the importance of it but i mean look at how far it's fallen over time so i think so but you know what i think let's don't underestimate experience too mm. yes because, let's, let's yeah. say um i really want to point that out i'm really pro education because that's how we're being raised mm-hmm. to, to respect education you know, my mom has four different majors she's a professor of medicine so of course oh well, so, yeah it was instilled in you. Yeah, I, I grew up in this. I have masters myself uh, in in journalism and PR too, so it was part of my passion, right? But um, please do not underestimate your experience, because I think Terry would mention people like uh, they say, "Oh, you know what? I lost my job. I'm unemployed right now. What I'm going to do? Oh, I'm going to be a coach." <laughs> Right, coach. and so something like that, right? Oh, oh, I had new word. I don't know what does it mean, really, but I'm gonna be a coach. Yeah, so those people really will mess up the rep of, uh, or I'm gonna be a marketer, I'm gonna be a salesperson, or something like that. But they have no experience, they have no real education behind background or in it. But I think your results um, are very important to yes. me. Yes, I feel your results will be your credibility yep. in the end yep. of the day, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. because um, like, like you mentioned some of my achievements, you know, I'm really proud of them. I'm really happy. And then let's say if I will be trying to work with leaders and help them become role models, but how can I do it if I did not achieve that? Right. In the same time. So I think your clients um, will probably ask for your education, maybe not, but I think they always will respect your results, you mm-hmm. know, with yeah. you, because if you can do it with you, probably it, it depends how determined they are and how much work they will put in to that um, too, because it's, it's mutual, it's a partnership. It's not only you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, Right, so we have to shift a little bit that responsibility on our clients and make them understand that it's a mutual responsibility to get their their results up because you already got your results up. So education, yes, absolutely. And for instance, I keep educating myself every year, taking classes, going to seminars, training, I just... Yeah, Mm -hmm. I just got all the, uh, you know, like this year, several new certifications, you know, train the trainer, all that speaking. And it's very important because remember, please remember we as role models, people will look at us and they will say, okay, I can do that. But they keep educating themselves. So we have to as well. Mm -hmm. Where's, Where's the marketing conference you're going to in March, Janet? Social media examiners, social media marketing world. Yeah. It's in San Diego. Which oh, is she's in one. San Diego. I'm in San Diego. Oh, it's a huge conference. They're expecting 4,000 this year. So When is it exactly? Maybe I'll stop by. It is March 22nd, 3rd, and 4th, I believe. So it's social media examiner. They're the biggest social media people. Awesome. Oh, there, then so. I'll find yeah, out. Look it up. Look it up. Yeah, it's a big, going to be a great conference. You know what? I have to say that in being in San Diego, it's really comfortable because all the biggest conferences that I have a pleasure oh, yeah. to participate in are right sure. here. I know. Yeah. I know. We have to fly from... I know. <laughs> So let's let's change gears. We talked about an idea of funnels earlier. We mentioned that word a couple of times. You mentioned it. I mentioned it. I'm sure Janet mentioned it. Um, you have co-authored two books. Um, 
which is a very interesting to me because I, I like the idea of sharing that weight with somebody else, right? Exactly. Uh, partnering. And especially when you're partnering with people that are big names. So Brian Tracy is huge. Can you talk about that experience and how that's helped you and ignite your life nice. is the name of the book okay. with Brian Tracy. She's holding it up for those of us who aren't watching this very on video cool. and will be listening to it. So very cool. How did that come about? Great question. And I love that you use the word funnel because that's very important. I want you to understand that things like books, right? Like any way, anything that we put out there, podcasts, uh, reports, quizzes, opt-in windows that are a lead magnet. So something that you can basically introduce yourself to your audience for free or for little price, right? Like book, books cost, obviously. Um, and you, they becoming familiar with you through that lead magnet and um, will follow you. Probably you will start a relationship. You can nurture this relationship and then it will be really organically, uh, you know, when they can make the decision to hire you or not, right? They resonate with you or not. Mm -hmm. So that's how it came about. This is exactly, that was exactly my purpose. What branding is really is how do you position yourself? Everything is so important. Anything that you put out there, your content, your work. Um, so uh, we have to be very conscious of what we're putting out there. So um, I was making sure that everything is very professional. Um, so I got contacted uh, for the, the first book and the second book as well from you know uh, the authors for by Brian Tracy company from um, Jim and Jim, uh, Brett and Jim Lutz company at first to write the first book as well with them. And I really love the co-authoring we mentioned with Terry because you, we are really not there to do everything alone. Let me tell you, right? Absolutely. We don't have to like, yes, we can dominate our field, but seriously, we will be the most successful if you can dominate with just other people, having mm -hmm. a great team. So for me, co-authoring the books with other people, like they called me and they asked me, would you like to be part of it? I said, yes, absolutely. Sure. No brainer. It's uh -huh. a great community. I want to be part of it. Um, I will, you know, uh, have the opportunity to publish my book, uh, become a bestseller, of course. And then another part of your branding and positioning too is your um, being uh, associated with the right yeah. people yeah. in your career, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, it was an honor when, when Brian Tracy company uh, called me to, to co-author a book. I said, of course. But it was an honor because I remember as a baby, I grew up on his book of success and leadership. Yeah. You know, he's my mom's favorite author. So I said, absolutely, of course. It, it's no brainer. Oh, but a great. lot of people don't want to do it sometimes because they said, no, I want to do it myself. And no. it takes them yeah. so yeah. much, right? Yeah. And yeah, and, but it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. In you have to do your part, writing, marketing, branding, it's all a lot to do, but you can do it. Especially if I could do it, you can do it too. I, I think that's fantastic advice and a great way to position yourself. Speaking of positioning yourself, how do these lovely people find you? Um, that's a great question. So uh, the first book, um, I turned the first book into ebook, basically. It's called Manifest Your Greatness Today. And you can basically download it as a free gift from me at my website, yourfavoritebusinesscoach.com. So think about me this way. Who is your favorite business coach in the whole world? <laughs> gotcha, right? There you so, go. Yes, exactly. That's good so, rating. Very simple. So very simple. So you're yeah. getting your free ebook at yourfavoritebusinesscoach.com. And you can actually go there and see because it's, it's nothing different than a lead magnet that I was mentioning mm -hmm. before, where you can put your email and then you becoming part of my lovely what list, right? So you will be in touch with me uh, if you choose. If not, that's fine. Uh, and then you can have your book 
And also, uh, if you get in touch with me um, at your favorite businesscoach.com, uh, one of my top business coaches will have a pleasure to offer you free discovery session. But if you mention that you've seen me at this podcast with Terry and Janet. Awesome. 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 Well, thank awesome. you. That's a great offer for Ernie. Ernie is our name for our audience. audience. Just call them Ernie. <laughs> because, well, it starts with E. Yeah, that was right. really awesome. the simplest one. So speaking of, they and the rest of you can find us at businessgrowthtime.com. There's 65 plus other podcasts sitting out there for your listening and learning pleasure. You can connect with us on our Facebook group at businessgrowthtime.xyz. We've got 500-ish people in there hanging out and sharing great ideas for business growth. We're on the Stitcher. We're on the iTunes. So we're, we're kind of wherever you are. Janet, anything <laughs> that I missed that I should have said? No, this was fantastic. And I think, I mean, I definitely, I know I'm going to go get this uh, ebook. And I do think that, um, you know, listen to the points that Asha had because, you know, everything made a lot of sense and let's niche it down. <laughs> niche, niche, niche to be rich, rich, rich. <laughs> yes, baby, Love it. Right. Love and I'll it. see you also on your Facebook. I know we are connected. So I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn. Please come connect with me. I would love to talk to you. Great. Thank you guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Asha, for being such a wonderful guest with great information. Janet, as always, a pleasure. And...